we can now engage the thoughts of a former director of the Ghana School of Law, Kweku Antasari, uh, for more on today's rulings. Uh, thank you very much, sir, for your time. I I'm sure you were monitoring this proceedings uh, that, that was aired live on TV3 today. Let me start off, first of all, by asking about the preliminary objections that uh, Mr. Thadiosori made to uh, one of the, uh, to the judges, uh, Mr. Jehu, I, I imagine, uh, when he stated categorically that, you know, the fact that he was a Cadbury member of the NPP automatically meant that he should be re recused uh, from the matter. And, and were you satisfied with the decision given by the courts? <clears throat> well, um, thank you very much for having me on your show. Uh, my, my reaction is this. Uh, this is not the first time that we are having um, a known uh, political activist mounting uh, the, the bench. In fact, it's, you know, since uh, independence in, in 1957. But uh, specifically on that is uh, girls' uh, empowerment today, I would have thought that since uh, at his vetting, this issue you know, of his uh, parliamentary candidate uh, arose and uh, was uh, debated on the floor of parliament. Uh, the EJ urged with the greatest respect in empaneling him. And uh, the justice in question himself, you know, could have done the needful by accusing himself. But you see, our known political and judicial culture is that it is very, very, very difficult, you know, for uh, public officers to accept truth and get as it. It is not, you know, our culture to do that. And therefore, you know, for as long as uh, it has, we have precedent, it will continue. But then it is up to individual justices of the uh, Superior Court of Judicature to be realistic and on occasion they decline the Chief Justice's invitation to be empaneled. This will save the nation, you know, the, the, the shame that we are undergoing now. So I will not blame, I will not blame the current chief justice. It has happened before. Uh, I was, I was um, on Joy FM program a few minutes ago, and I mentioned, I referred to Justice Francis Pegues, you know, sitting on the uh, Kwam versus Kwam Ikeni case, where, you know, uh, our, our president, Nanado, was the lead counsel, and he made it known to the, the justice that, I mean, they, everybody saw him adorn an NDC T-shirt. And then he sat. And the NDC at the time said, you know, so what? That is why I find the pronouncement by the chief justice, the reference to uh, Justice Poama as a former, you know, general secretary, you know, of the of the PNC is very quite offensive. That pronouncement has been left to you know the the known lawyers who are political activists and you know spokespersons for the parties. This shouldn't have come from, from the chief justice. Having said that, I will I will say that everything was wrong with the composition of that Gao. Mm. Everything was wrong. We uh, got I it see. wrong. The city got it wrong. Right. Gao got it wrong. Mm. Now, uh, the question is, this is one of the hard cases. Do, you know, hard cases make bad law? No. Hard cases don't make bad law. Now, uh, two weeks ago, I traveled at the, um, the, the, the dragging of the speaker, you know, to court and the speaker you know, representing that because I said that it was not a legal department of the of, of, of parliament that ought to have defended the figure that under Article 881 and 5, 
it is the sole prerogative of the Attorney General, and therefore, the Attorney General ought to have been sued. So the speaker being sued was a non-starter, and, I mean, hell broke loose. Today, right. the Attorney General himself mm. has, you know, brought this thing out. Right. That so, other so, because it's so prerogative right. to be sued, and not the speaker. So right. the Supreme Court aired a little with the greatest respect. Their are their, their, their and lordship nodded a little. Right, right, right. Mrs. Answer, I know the debates will go on and on and on about the Supreme Court and a lot of the, you know, rulings today, but essentially what the Speaker was seeking to do was to have the Supreme Court depart from its earlier position. What has happened today is that the, the Supreme Court, led by the Chief Justice, uh, Justice Tokonu, has essentially decided to go by its earlier ruling, suggesting that it will not depart from its earlier ruling. It has been more fortified to hold the position that indeed the Speaker has to stay execution of the earlier ruling. Now, what do you think are the possible ramifications of this? Is it a slap in the face of the Speaker? My brother, I, 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 it was time that we even stop looking at all these things. The truth of the matter is, what is the effect of the drama that is unfolding? You call the, it a the, drama? The, the real effect, is that what you call it? Is that how you see it? Your question, the answer to your question is that for as long as the political and judicial uh, tango persists, parliament may remain closed until the next parliament assembles on 7 January 2025. Do, do, is, 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 is that what we want? This is not what we want. What we want is a functioning parliament addressing the very serious political, social, economic challenges confronting the nation before you know the forthcoming crucial elections. We need to we to understand that there are six six pressing bills to be considered. They are being put into limbo. But, so but, what but, we need to rather to discuss at this stage is, is not whether the Supreme Court decision is you know, right or wrong. For me, I maintain my stance that the, 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 the Supreme Court's uh, ruling on the Speaker's ruling was erroneous. With the greatest respect. Why do you feel Mr. Sam, sorry, sorry, I'm just wondering why why do you feel to appreciate the position of the Leonard Chief Justice when she suggests that for those of you who thought that this was not the exclusive jurisdiction of the Supreme Court and that the High Court should have had this matter, the, the Leonard Chief Justice suggests that even if the matter was taken to the High Court, and anybody could have invoked the jurisdiction of the Supreme Court because it was a matter of constitutional interpretation. And for that matter, the High Court would have to stay its hands and wait on the Supreme Court to make a determination of the matter. This should convince you. Yeah, but that, that one is called, I mean, let us segregate the, the issues. The one before the, the High Court, 100%, the two do right. The, the, the High Court will have to hold its hands, restrain itself, and you know, refer the matter to the Supreme Court. Correct, 100%. What about you know, the Honorable Afeno Markin's uh, expertise application before the Supreme Court? On that one, I'm saying that the jurisdiction of the Supreme Court was not properly invoked. And today, we all heard, and I have a, a copy of the ruling in front of me, the CJ is saying that the moment the Supreme Court, the, the moment the Speaker made his ruling, the jurisdiction of the, of the Supreme Court was invoked. And I'm saying that, with the greatest respect, the Supreme Court's jurisdiction is not invoked on the floor of Parliament. The Supreme Court, the jurisdiction of the Supreme Court, like any other you know, superior court of judicature, is only properly invoked when the, 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 the parties are physically in front of the court 
or when they have voluntarily submitted to the jurisdiction of the court. It doesn't, it is not involved in the first one to a pronouncement by the speaker in the house or by the executive at cabinet. It is involved when, you know, one party brings another party and that party who initiates the process takes the necessary procedural steps to serve the other party. Be in accordance with the rule of natural justice here, the other side. And therefore, where the other side is not properly in front of the court, the court has no jurisdiction. Right. I'm afraid we've got to leave it here. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Kweku. Uh, we've got to say a big thank you to you uh, for your time here on News 360.